this morning. Let's grab the gray hymnal and turn to page one, two, three, page four. <laughs> what page? Four. Page four. Yeah. Brother John would pick page four, not me. Page four. Page four. Can we everybody stand, please? Page four. The gray hymnal. seek you with all the heart. I pray for the sick around about us, Father God, for there's so many. The ones on our prayer list that spoke about in Sunday school this morning, I pray, Father God, that to be your will, lay your hand upon them and touch them and heal them. I pray, Father, for the ones that lost loved ones. I pray, Father God, that you would comfort them as only you can comfort them. I pray, Father, you forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings. In Christ's name I ask this. Amen. Amen. Good morning again, Lake Country Baptist Church. Good morning. Good morning. Kind of hit me on this side. This side's out of us today. And, and I didn't mean that in a bad way. There's more folks over here. But anyway, it is good to see each and every one of y'all this morning. Visitors, always glad to have visitors. And we just welcome you anytime you have an opportunity to come visit with us here at Lake Country Baptist Church. We just hope you do to come visit with us. You get up in time to get here at Sunday school. Our Sunday school program starts at 9.45. Love to have you for that. Got just a few announcements this morning. Uh, first one, welcome our new uh, church member, Dale Swint. Of course, he's not new, but he finally decided to join us in the, on a church membership instead of just showing up every time. <laughs> you know, he's like a straight catch. You feed him, he kept coming back. So. Anyway, glad to have our new member. He, he's an old classmate, and I uh, really enjoy being in, in church with him. <laughs> Building and grounds meeting today at 4 o'clock. Uh, Brother Gary wants to meet with all singers for a few minutes after our morning service. Christmas shoebox items. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, I've been fighting allergies all week. Small notebooks, slinky, playing cards, uh, mini etch sketches Also, Vicky will be taking pictures this morning and 
And, and I guess every Sunday, but you're going to be taking pictures this morning for the, for our church director if you want to get your picture retook. If you had never had your picture took, uh, she'll be taking pictures today. A uh, fun festival event for the youth and church members is scheduled right now for the end of October. I haven't got a specific date yet. Randy and Carrie will let us know the date and time later. So to help our youth group grow, bring your kids to the evening church uh, youth group. And uh, we're still looking to hire a nursery worker. Any other announcements? Prayer request? Charlene Terry. diagnosed with cancer. Um, he's having some rough go around right now, but also for financial reasons. Um, they keep out of insurance isn't only going to cover less than half the cost of everything. Um, so it's going to be a real, but God's going to, he's got the faith that God's going to open that door for him. So. Sam, did I see your hand go up one Sam? Yeah, uh, my son John flying in from Portugal today. And then my, my great grandson, uh, whenever they get themselves back on this MRI, it might not be cancer. Good. Mm -hmm. Don't want to open it, No one else? Brother Gene, the two left feet speak, love and prayer, please. Okay, most gracious Heavenly Father, the Lord, as I come before you, throne of grace, I come praying for forgiveness of my sins and for a failure, Lord, to just stand nothing between you and I that you hear this prayer. Lord, you heard these uh, names mentioned this morning, Lord, for healing, for comfort, for all kinds of uh, things, and Lord, for those that have lost loved ones, for to comfort them. I pray, Lord, that you'd be with them, that you administer to the needs that they have to these people, Lord, and we would not just pray for them one time, but we continue to pray for them until we get a, re a good report. And Lord, I thank you for this, this church. I thank you for Brother Gary. I thank you that each person who stands up and takes responsibility and, and takes a job in the church, Lord, that's what you told us we should do. And Lord, I pray that you'd be with us. That, Lord, I pray the Holy Spirit would move in the service today, that hearts would be touched and, and lives would be changed. Lord, it's in Jesus' most holy and precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, page 182 of the Great Hymn. <coughs>
has asked for everyone to stand, please. <coughs> and on the last verse, the ushers will come. And I believe Miss McCass and Miss Terry are going to sing us a special. So, Miss Terry, you can get after that, please. Page 430. <laughs>
morning. The song I'm singing today just reminds us that it's all about the cross. Something or you know, or just life is hard. 
But I, this is a place of refuge. This is a place of mercy and grace. And just like that song she just sang, how wonderful it is. Amen. And, and Don and I are going through some really, really tough times. But this is our refuge. Y'all are our family. And I'm so proud of you. And God has done that. He has given y'all to us at this time. How gracious and how great is our Lord. <laughs> Amen. 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 Thank you, sister. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, the Lord is here this morning. Can you feel His Spirit? Can you feel His presence? He's here to be praised, to be honored, to be worshipped. He's here for us to confess to. He's here for us to pour our hearts out to. He's here for us to become one with Him. Amen. And that's what our desire should be. If you have your Bibles, would you please turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Be reading verses 9 through 16. Uh, we're going to be uh, talking to you this morning about godly sorrow. How many of you like to be sorrowful? I didn't see a single hand go up that time. Amen. If you ask a question, you never know. So we don't like to be sorrowful, do we? But there's some sorrow that brings good. There's some sorrow that has a great reward when we yield ourselves to that sorrow and do what is said. And godly sorrow is one of those things that we don't like to experience, but it's something we have to address because we're sinners. Amen? And so if you have the Bibles, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, 9 through 16. Now I rejoice not that you were made sorry, but that you sorrowed to repentance. For you were made sorry after a godly manner, that you might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow, now y'all listen to this, worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. For behold this self same thing that you sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you, yea, what clearing of yourselves, yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge. In all things you have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. Wherefore, though I wrote unto you, I did it not for this cause, that had done the wrong, nor for the cause that suffered wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear unto you. Therefore we were comforted in your comfort, yea, and exceedingly the more joy, for the joy of Titus, because his spirit was refreshed by you all. For I have boasted, for if I have boasted anything to him of you, I am not ashamed. But as we spake all things to you in truth, even so our boasting which I made before Titus is found a truth. And his inward affection is more abundant toward you, whilst he remembereth the obedience of you of you all, how with fear and trembling you received him. I rejoice therefore that I have confidence in you in all things. Father, thank you for your word. Help us, Lord, today what godly sorrow really means to us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In these verses, Paul addresses this godly sorrow. He says that he rejoices because they were made sorry unto repentance. Amen? Repentance is, a, is a, uh, something that the Lord allows us to do that we don't like to do. Amen? We don't like to be sorrowful. We don't like to be wrong. We don't like to admit that we're wrong. We don't like to admit guilt. We don't like to, to show that we're guilty. As a matter of fact, if we had our way, we'd just go around grinning all the time and nobody could ever see what's going on inside of us. Well, that's okay for me and you and others, but guess what? God sees inside of you. He knows what's there. He knows what's not supposed to be there. And He's made a way for us not to have to carry that guilt inside of us. Isn't that a beautiful thing that our God has done for us? 
And it, it makes me wonder sometimes why, why we have so much trouble doing this. Now, there is a vast difference between worldly sorrow and godly sorrow. And, and uh, verse 10 clarifies that. It says, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but to sorrow of the world worketh death. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And so we, we don't need to be sorrowful like the world is sorrowful. You know how the world's sorrowful? They're sorry they got caught. <laughs> And they only apologize when they benefit from it. God helped the church and the people of God never to look at sorrow this way and only be sorry because you got caught and because you're going to have to apologize to someone because you got caught to save face. We're not here to save face. We're here to save our soul from hell. Amen. And God's given us a way to do that. And keeping our souls pure and clean before God is a gift that He gives us and He gives us a way to do that. And we must rejoice when we're able to come to Him in this manner. Amen. Yes. And, and so uh, this, this, is, uh, uh, the, this shows us what the difference between godly sorrow and worldly sorrow is. As Christians, we are filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Are you filled with the Holy Ghost today? Amen. Sister Berlin got up and said, I'm so full of the Spirit today. Praise God, we ought to all stand up every day, every day of the week and rejoice that I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 You better be full of the Holy Ghost because if we are not, we are none of His. Let me give you that scripture. I, you know I use these scriptures over and over. They're so important to us without the Spirit of God. Listen, Romans 8 and 9 says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if, there's a little pesky word, if so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Praise the Lord when somebody says, that I'm so full of the Spirit. You know what they're saying? Jesus is in me. Hallelujah. Amen. We ought to be glad to rejoice that, but he don't stop there. He said, now if any man have not the Spirit of God, He does not belong to God. Woo, I don't know how more blunt he could put it. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you don't have God. Amen. So, so you need to remember these things. The Spirit of Christ that is in us knows the will of God and brings glory to the Son. That's the work of the Holy Spirit in us. Let me give you another scripture. John chapter 16. Verses 13 and 14. The scriptures that I, I use very often, those of you who keep up with this. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Now he's talking about the Holy Ghost. He shall glorify me. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said the Holy Ghost in you will glorify me. If you show Jesus glory, that's why you show Jesus glory. Because the Holy Ghost in you compels you to glorify our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. For he shall receive of mine, he shall receive from me, from Jesus Christ, and he will show it unto you. Now, not just the good things. Not just the things that are, Jesus is pleased with will He show you. He will also show you the things that the Lord Jesus is not pleased with. Amen. Thank you, Amen. We don't have to worry about the things we do right for God. we got to worry about the things we do wrong Amen. before God. Those are the things that get us in trouble. Amen. Amen. So the Spirit knows these things. Now, I want to make a, a, a bold statement right here, and I've probably said this before. I'm going to say it again because it's so true. Listen to this. You cannot glorify Jesus while you're living in sin. Amen. Let me say that again. You cannot glorify Jesus Christ while you're living in sin. Amen. Now, it makes it very important then for us to not live in sin, doesn't it? Amen? Amen. It makes it very important. We cannot glorify. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34, that sin is a reproach to any people. That includes Christian people. 
You believe that? Sin is a reproach because it brings reproach before God. And so, uh, did you know that every person sins? Uh, did you? Now, some of you perfect people I know don't think that. And I'm sorry for you. Amen? I'm not that, I ain't got there yet. I'm not perfect. I sin. Am I proud of I sin? No. I am not proud that I sin. But the scripture in 1 John chapter 1 and 8 says this, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Now there's a lot of people say, well, you can't sin, but the Lord leave you. The Holy Spirit will just fly out of you, you sin. Oh, really? Thank God that ain't true. Amen. <laughs> We'd wear him out running away from us, wouldn't we? He done left everybody, even those that proclaim that. Right. Amen? If that's true, the ones that say it aren't saved either. Right. I'm glad the Lord don't abandon us so easily. Amen. Are you? So this, the scripture tells us, John told us in 1 John, that we are all sinners. And if we say we're not, we're lying to ourselves. We're deceiving our own selves. How many of you like to be around somebody that's kind of self-righteous and they don't never do no wrong? <laughs> How does it make you feel? Sick. <laughs> make you when you see them coming, you won't go the other way because you don't want to hear how righteous they are. You know why I don't want to hear how righteous anybody is? Because the Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. And any righteousness and any bragging rights we have, we don't need to brag on ourselves. We need to brag on Jesus Christ Amen. and God's glory that dwells in us. Amen. Because if anything we do is good, He's the one doing it and not us. That's Hallelujah. That's our God. That's our Savior. That's our Jesus. That's who He is. And that's what He can do for me and you. Amen. Amen. Something happens in us when we are made aware of sin in our lives. Now, another work of the Holy Ghost is is that when we do wrong, He brings that to our attention. I, I'm uh, afraid for people who can sin without conviction. Amen. There's something wrong. I'm, I'm worried about a person who can openly sin without guilt. I'm worried about a person who can justify all of their sin and say, oh, God's all right with that. No, He's not. God never all right with our sin. Hey, we don't have an excuse for that anymore. He sent His Son and He died on the cross for that sin. Don't make fun. Don't make a mockery of sin before God. Amen. He's not laughing about that. Okay. It's not funny to Him. I don't care how much fun you're having. How drunk you get. How doped up you get. How much you fornicate. How much you commit adultery. It ain't funny to God and He don't accept it. Amen. 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 He makes us aware of that sin. That's what the Holy Ghost does inside of us. That ain't all He does. But that's what He does when we sin. He brings conviction to us. When the righteous spirit, which is the Holy Ghost in you, witnesses our sin, and if he's in us, guess what? He knows everything you think. He hears everything you say. He watches everything you watch. Mm -hmm. He's with you every minute of the day. He sees everything you do in private. He sees everything you do in public. He knows who you are. And he is a direct line. <laughs> Save the world. Right. Amen. Amen. Because they know all things in common. And so this righteous spirit, the Holy Ghost in you, the, he witnesses our sin and he immediately or very soon afterward, because sometimes we we wait a day or two before we feel can they ever done that? Mm -hmm. I think I got by with something and then all of a sudden back it hits. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Very soon afterwards, he speaks to our spirit inside of us. Amen? Think about this. You've got a spirit in there too. He don't kick you out. He comes in there with you. And then we recognize that we have sinned against God. 
And we should be ashamed because we have betrayed our Savior who loves us so much, who gave Himself for us. And you know what the, 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 the level of that, that shame is? It's how much you love Him. If you love Him more than anything else, it's a guilt you don't want to carry with you. It's a shame you don't want to feel. It's something you don't want. Amen? <clears throat> and so He's given us this, this way. He's given us the Holy Spirit that is, shows us what we have done wrong. We are supposed to glorify the Lord, not dishonor Him in our sin. This awareness uh, given by the Holy Ghost brings a thing called guilt. Paul calls it this, godly sorrow. Amen. Next time you feel that godly sorrow, think about this message. Think about this scripture. Think about who is causing that in your life. When you feel this guilt, this godly sorrow, it's not because He wants to, to, to jar you, to punish you, to beat you. You know what He wants to do? He wants you to confess that to Him so He can forgive you for it. What a God. What a Savior. What a great love that He has for His children. Amen? Amen. It's, it's godly sorrow. And we feel terrible because we have let Jesus... Have any of y'all ever felt terrible because you, you let Jesus down? Everybody just go like this. If you're saved, you felt this. Amen? Amen? When we feel this, and we feel terrible that we have let Jesus down, this leads us to something that, that in, in the past, in teaching that I did, it's called... A crisis of belief. Amen. It causes a crisis inside of you. Nobody else can see it, but you can feel it. You know it's there. Something is not right. Your prayer won't get past that sin fan right there. Why? What's wrong? You have guilt. You have sin that you hadn't addressed before God yet. Amen. <laughs> and in this crisis of belief, I'll call it, then you have to make up your mind. Do I want to keep this sin hidden? Let me go ahead and add this. There's a lot of people walking around with hidden sin in their life. They think because nobody else knows about it, they can't see it, that it's okay. It's not. Hidden sin and sin that every other person's not aware of in your life is the most dangerous sin you can have in you. That's a sin where you think you've done nothing wrong. It's dangerous to feel that way. And so you got to make up your mind. Do I want to hide this? I mean, after all, no one can see the turmoil that's going on inside of me. I can smile and put on the front. Have you ever done that? While you were miserable? Huh? We all have, haven't we? You know what I'm talking about. Or do I want to yield my spirit? To the Holy Spirit of God. See, because the Holy Spirit's not the one feeling the guilt. Your spirit is the one feeling the guilt. And look at Romans 8 and 16 says, The Spirit itself, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So our spirit must agree with the Holy Spirit of God. Do you think God is wrong when He makes you guilty? Is He wrong? Do you think the Holy Spirit is wrong when He brings a sin to your attention? No. But it is your cue in your carnal spirit, the, the, the spirit in you that God gave to you, to yield to the Holy Spirit and say, you're right. I'm wrong. I'm guilty. And allow the Spirit to lead you into confession <coughs> before a holy, righteous, great, wonderful, forgiving God. Amen. Why do we make it so hard on ourselves? Why do I do it too? Why? It's a blessing to be able to confess and be forgiven. 
and it makes you feel so much gooder. <laughs> I'm from Arkansas, you know. When we yield to the Holy Ghost, He leads us to confession of our sin before God. When we do this, look at what 1 John 1 and 9 says. Listen to it. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins <coughs> of all of our unrighteousness, amen, and to cleanse us from that unrighteousness. That's what God will do for you. That's what He has promised to do for you. That's what Jesus Christ died for you to do. That's why He shed His blood so He could do this very, very thing. We don't have to carry guilt. We don't have to carry shame. We don't have to carry hidden sins because they're not hidden in reality. Right. Amen. Right. They're evident to God. And then He is faithful and just. This is how the blood of Jesus is applied to us. Mm -hmm. This is how His blood is poured out upon us. This is how we're made white as snow. This is how we are forgiven. 1 John 1 and 7 in that same scriptural text. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, will cleanse us from Amen. all sin. Amen. It's a promise. It's not made up. It's not fabricated. It's absolute truth. And the Holy Ghost leads you to this truth. The Holy Ghost leads you to this confession. The Holy Ghost makes you aware of the sin in your life and the guilt that you feel. And He's trying to draw you to, his, to Jesus Christ in a place of confession that He can cleanse you. And my, let me tell you what, there ain't no better feeling in the whole wide world than to be clean before God. How many of you remember the time of your salvation? How many of you remember? I remember it so clearly. Me and my wife got saved the same night at the same altar. And I'll never forget the way I felt when I got down there. But I'll even never more forget how I felt when I got up from that altar. I felt clean. I felt holy. I felt saved. I felt filled with something I'd never experienced before. Jesus Christ. And it wasn't but, but a few days later where I sinned. And I felt something for the first time in my life, Brother Sam, that I've never felt before. I felt the conviction of the Holy Ghost inside of my body. And you know what I did? I got on my knees right then and I repented. I've never felt that before. And you know what? I knew without a doubt no one had to tell me that Jesus Christ lived in here. Right. Hallelujah! Amen. Do you know that? Do you feel that? Amen. Do you know that kind of purity, that kind of righteousness, that kind of forgiveness? Do you know that? Amen. And when at that moment when you repent, you get up, look, get listen to me. Holy, clean, acceptable, <coughs> forgiven. Not because of anything you've done, but because of what Jesus has done for you and for me. Amen. God help us to know godly sorrow that leads to repentance. Paul knew the Corinthians were saved people. He knew that. He knew that they had done wrong and they did not want to address that sin. He knew that the Holy Spirit would convict them because they were saved. He knew that because they were saved, at some point they would repent. That's what 2 Corinthians is about. 1 Corinthians is jumping on them for the sin. 2 Corinthians is rejoicing because they have repented Amen. before God. Hallelujah. Amen. If it happens to an individual, it will happen in a church. Amen. You want revival? Repent. Everybody. Amen. Get clean. And watch God, what He does. Amen. And He knew they were saved. And it didn't happen immediately. And it didn't happen all at one time. You know why? Because everybody 
don't have the same level of spiritual maturity Amen. as everybody else. Right. Right. And we got to be careful when we start looking down our noses at brothers and sisters in Christ because they don't know everything you know. Because they're not at the place that you are. Amen? Amen. That's why the scripture says to him that knoweth to do good and do it not to him that is sin. How about to the one that don't know yet? You think God wants us to kick them out because they hadn't repented because they opened their sin? We've got to teach them this. Right. We've got to show them who Jesus is. We've got to show them who the Holy Ghost is. We've got to show them what forgiveness looks like. We've got to show them what confession looks like. That's why the altars need to always be filled with people who love Jesus Christ. So others will know it's part of their discipleship and it's part of our gift to them to show them. And those people who aren't as, uh, as strong spiritually as you are. Those people who are still sucking the bottle of grace and not eating the steak, when they see the seasoned Christians that get up and go before the Lord and repent and weep, they say, wow, wow. Now I know what to do. We are to live by example of who Christ is. We are the example. Amen. So this spiritual maturity, it's, it's not knowing more about God than someone else. It has a little bit to do with it. But it is realizing that Jesus Christ is Lord and that the Holy Ghost can and will help us as we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Amen. It's knowing what God wants and doing it. Amen? Amen? Don't forget the doing it part. Because if you don't do it, it don't mean nothing. Right. Knowing it's not enough till you do it. And then you've done something. You've shown what you know. But it did happen. They did repent. And Paul said, now he is comforted. <clears throat> Titus, who brought this news to Paul, was overjoyed because he knew how that church had been acting too. And when he got there, probably months, maybe even a year or so later, maybe longer than that, he saw a completely different church. He saw a church that had turned from their sin and was now rejoicing and basking in the goodness and the greatness of Jesus Christ. That's what the church is supposed to be. Amen. Amen. We're to rejoice in God. It did happen. And the Holy Ghost conviction had led them to godly sorrow. Now listen to this. Because one thing, when you obey God, it leads to something else. As you obey God, for one thing, He reveals more of Himself to you. You get to see more of Him. You get to understand more about Him. As long as you've got this wacky sin and, and hiding it in your life, you ain't going to learn nothing about Him because He's wanting to deal with that. Amen. And then he'll move you further along. And a lot of people hadn't figured this out yet. They think, well, I can go home, I go over in the house, them church folks don't know what I'm doing there. I just do everything I want, really. Really. You really believe that's going to keep God out because you close the door to your house? <laughs> Amen. You really believe because you do it in the dark, he can't see? He's the light, man. He, he, it don't, ain't no darkness around him. He sees everything. You really believe that? You really believe you can lie and hide and, and con conceive and connive and, and mislead everybody and God don't know what you're doing and who you are and what you've done? You really, really believe that? If you do, you need salvation. Amen. Amen. You need Jesus Christ. You need the Holy Ghost because if you had the Holy Ghost in you, you'd know better. He wouldn't let you get by with believing that. He would convict you and you'd feel so guilty. You know what? I've seen people hold that sin. I've been guilty of it. Hold it. I ain't letting go of this sin. I like this sin. <laughs> Have you ever done that? You say, no, that's not why. I'm just, I'm just making a point. Why else would hang on to it? And by the time I feel so guilty, by the time I finally come to the altar, 
I'm weeping and crying. I'm a, it's called humility, by the way. And jerking and nervous. And I'm afraid because I know I've sinned and made God ashamed of me. But He's never failed yet to hear that repentant heart. Amen. To apply His blood and make me feel better and loved. If God does that for us, shouldn't we do that for each other? Amen. So this godly sorrow led to repentance, which led to forgiveness. And the washing of the blood led to restoration back to God. It led to praise. It led to worship and the glorification of Jesus Christ, our Savior. They did it all. How? He says, with fear and trembling, they came before God. And through obedience, they found again confidence in Jesus Christ. I don't know where you're at today. I don't know what's going on inside of you. I don't know where you're clean or you're dirty. I don't know. But the Lord does. I don't know if you've got guilt that you've been carrying around for a while. I don't know if you've got unrepentant sin in your life. I don't know. But He does. Listen to the Holy Ghost. And if you know you have sin in your life and you don't feel guilt or conviction, you need to come up here today and we need to, we need to get you saved. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Because that's what He does. The Holy Ghost. He don't put up with nonsense inside of you. He shows it to you that this is nonsense and this is not pleasing your Savior. He knows the mind of Christ. And He shows it to you. And let Him do His work. Listen to Him. And if He's shown you anything in your life today, these altars are open for you. Come. Come to Him. Give it to Him. Repent. Bring Godly sorrow with you. Humble yourself before a great and holy God. And claim the blood of Christ, which is given for us all, which is tame. You know, one of the things I see most in the church is brothers and sisters get at odds with one another. It takes them forever to forgive. Forever to get over. Maybe you need to just take somebody by the hand today. And pray with them. Forgive them. Cherish them. Love them. Pray for them. Maybe you're here today and, and you know what I'm talking about, about this unrepentant sin that you have in your life. It can be a lot of things. It can be, man, I tell you what, if you look in the scripture, the list is endless. It can just be telling filthy jokes, cussing. It don't have to be some sexual perversion. Anything that you do to bring shame to Jesus, is a sin. What do you want to do today? These altars ought to be full right now. People ought to be down here calling on the name of the Lord, confessing their faults, their guilt, their shame, calling on His name to be made holy, righteous, usable, clean, willing vessels that are humble before Him. 
God bless you for coming. God bless you all. <coughs> don't wait. Don't carry it. You know what? Some of you may not even have sin in your life. Just come tell him how much you love him. How much you appreciate him. How much you're thankful for the blessings he's poured out upon you in your life, in your home, in your family. Thank you. Just for being your God. For loving you so much. The love of God is hard for me and you to comprehend. He died for people who were worthless to us. That reviled. People that we looked down our nose that He died for them. standing. Sister Janice, would you come on up here? Sister Janice came to me earlier before church and she's got someone that she wants to be that she wants us to pray for. We've done this before. This person that she wants to pray for is not here. I'll let her tell you who, who this person is. Her name is Sammy Gage. She's my cousin and she's going to have open heart surgery this week and she's scared to death because her family members has had it and they didn't survive and she's just very fearful. She trusts the Lord. She, her daddy was a Pentecostal preacher. She knows the truth and she knows, you know, to have faith. But sometimes fear takes over. And that's the devil. And I want y'all to pray that I'm going to stand in the gap for her. Y'all lay hands on me, please. And, and the faith of us, we can move the mountains. Would you come up here, please? And just I'm going to have my hands on Sister Janice for Sam, Sammy, Sammy Joe. Sammy Joe, for Sammy Joe. And we're going to trust the Lord to, to reach out through our prayers and touch this woman and bring about healing to her body. We pray that's His will. That, that He would be glorified. That He would just show out for His church that we'll know that He hears these prayers and listens to them. And that His will be done in our life. 
And if you can't get close enough, just touch somebody that's close enough to touch. And we'll begin to pray. Lord Jesus, we come to you even now. And we thank you, Lord, for this great act of faith and courage that Sister Janice is revealing to us now. That we can stand in the gap for another person. Many a mama and daddy have done it for a child. And Lord, we know that you honor those acts of faith and prayer. So we lift up Sammy Joe. We got hands on Sister Janice, but we uh, our prayers are directed toward Sammy Joe God. And Lord, that even now you would touch her body. That even now, Lord, she would feel your presence and feel the Spirit of God in her life like she's never felt it before. Yes, that you would remove fear, doubt, and that you would comfort her by that presence that she'll have. And God, that if it be your will, Lord, that you just heal her body, that you become the great physician, that you, you just boggle the minds of the educated, and touch her and make her heart whole. God, that's up to you. We want your will done and we would just rejoice if that were to happen. But God, if she must go through this, for, for you know us. You have, a, you have a plan for our lives and sometimes you put us in places we don't want to be. So God, we want your will to be done and if it's your plan that she go through this, we pray God that you would just be with those doctors, those nurses, that staff that's in that room. And God, that you become their hands, that you become their minds, and everything that they do will be led by you, will come from you, and she still will feel your presence. As she wakes up, as she's sleeping, may she dream and see you. Yes. May she feel your spirit. May she see your face. May she feel the angels caress her. May she feel the heartbeat of Jesus Christ in her life. And Lord, when she wakes from that, may she glorify and honor you with all of her heart. And Lord, we will certainly rejoice because of how great you are and how much you love just the one Thank you, Lord, for being our God. Thank you, Lord, for your church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs>